Welcome to Finding the Modern Man podcast. Join me, Peter Kiri-Costa, your health and performance expert and self-leadership coach, as myself and my guests discuss and uncover what it means to be a man in today's society, helping you optimize physical, mental, and emotional health in order to create a life with purpose and passion in the changing world that we live in. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Finding the Modern Man podcast. Today, I'm very excited because I have my first guest on the show. As I promised you, I will have guests on that are coming from different backgrounds, different perspectives on life and what it is to be a man in today's society. Today, I'm very stoked because I've got a dear friend of mine, Pastor Phil Smith. Hi, Pete. Hey. Phil, good to see you. Yeah, you too, mate. Thanks. So good to be here. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. I really appreciate this. Yeah. And I've had mm. many of these kind of conversations with Phil over time. I've known him for some time. He's a dear friend and mentor of mine. And I really wanted to bring some of what I experience in my personal conversations with Phil to everyone. So it's, it's a big deal for me. It's great to have him on. And first of all, Phil, could you give us a bit of a background on you? Who is Phil Smith? Where have you come from and where you are now? Yeah, thanks, Pete. Um, my name's Phil. Um, I'm 56 years old. I age 60, 56 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can't start again, mate, can we? Nah, no. keep it going. Okay, keep it going. so I'm 56 years of age. I've been married since I was in my mid twenties. I've got five children. Most of them are adults. My, my youngest is now in year twelve, just about to graduate year twelve. Um, got one grandchild. Been pastoring this a church for twenty five years. Not this church. Been pastoring for twenty five years. Adventure of my life, mate. It's awesome. Now, could you give us a bit of a background as well on how you came to to be a pastor? What what is it that drives you to do what you do, and what was your calling? Oh, that's awesome. A really clear call from God, Pete. I yeah. had, um, it's a it's a weird story, but I was on holidays and I was cleaning at a, a three by three old tin garden shed and I was cleaning all the, it was literally full to the doors and I, so I was on holidays and going, I really have to clean up this. I can't fit anything more in there and I needed to fit more in there. Um, and God just spoke to me just in the quietness of just cleaning up and, you know, down the backyard and he just said, I want you to be a pastor. Yeah, wow. and so I just I've followed that and done it ever since. Now that's something I find really fascinating with your story, um, because you're not the stereotype of what people are used to in the church scene. Like, there's, I mean, not everyone fits into a stereotype in their industry, and this is one thing I love about you is because you're such a regular bloke. You don't. Mm. There's like, you just talk like a regular dude. And one of the things I find in what you said, when you had that clear calling, do you find that something over the years in your time working with men in your job that people have not paid attention to and not followed? Yeah. Not everyone, but there's a lot, a lot who rather don't even know what their meaning and their purpose is. They don't even know their identity. They don't even know who they are. Yeah, and it's really sad, mate. Like it's if you don't have a center, if you don't if you don't have that foundation of who you are and what your meaning is and what your purpose is, then yeah. you will float through life looking for something. Yeah, where do you find it goes? Like men tend to go when they do lack that vision and that purpose. Um, they'll go. I think yeah, that's a good question. They'll go for comfort. Oh yeah. Or they'll go for escape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like because of the everyday, there's no adventure in the everyday. Mm. So they look for escape. So they might go to porn. They might go to buying and selling. You know, they, they just look for something that makes them feel good. But the problem is that that stuff might make you feel good in the moment or, you know, initially. Yeah, yeah. But it, 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 it empties again and you've got to go and chase it again and chase it again. That's a big thing, isn't it? Yeah. I find that even, even in my own life when I've lacked a bit of purpose... I tend to just become self-destructive yeah. and just chasing that yeah, dopamine, yeah. that next quick hit. Yeah. And one of the things that I find, I feel people mistaken momentary pleasure or joy for happiness. Yes. So it makes you happy in that little second. Yeah. 
and then you just fall apart afterwards. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, you're back on that. Yeah. And how have you found, I guess like in your line of work, you you would see a lot of this over time. People that yeah. are looking for, for, for the answer, looking for a bit of guidance. Yeah. And one of the things that I love about my conversations with you is that you're not the type of person to just tell you what you should do. You take an example of something from scripture, something from life or a book you've read and then break it apart and make someone think about it. That's yeah, like, yeah. Okay. Have you found that that's a more beneficial way than just barking at people and dictating what people should do? Oh, 100%, Pete. Because I think people, people need to make their own decisions. If you tell them, if you suggest to them or tell them what they, you think they should do, yeah. then the difficulty becomes that's your concept, that's your idea. Mm. But if you just ask questions and help them walk the path of discovering what they should do and discovering yeah. who they are, then they own that because they've done the discovery. Yeah. You haven't told them, they've done the discovery. So questions are really, really powerful. Yeah. How did you come about getting better at questions? Because you ask amazing yeah. questions at the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's very succinct and to the point. And it's like, man, that's a skill. <laughs> Um, I've never thought about it before, Pete. <laughs> How do, uh, probably practice, like just because yeah. I, I spend a lot of time with people, like a lot of time with people. Yeah. So you just, you get to know like what questions to ask, you know, like you just read the person and you work out what, what questions to ask. Mm. Sometimes God speaks to me and will say, you know, you should ask this question. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that's like, they're, they're really significant. <laughs> where where you go, oh, that's usually a good turn in the conversation. Yeah. A, a good question will be a good turn in the conversation. Have you come across many situations like that where you've actually paused and thought, no, nah, I can't ask that? Um, not where I can't and I don't. Yeah. But, but where I'll, I'll certainly be, while, while we're having a conversation, you, you'll go, mm -hmm. oh, that's a significant question. Like you feel the weight of, okay, we're doing a significant turn now. Ah, right. Because yeah. I know I've found that at times when I've had that that message, that intuitive message come to me that says, oh, just ask this with someone. And that sometimes there's a part of me going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, too <laughs> yeah. personal, too personal. Yeah. Um, but I'm in yeah. a very different position yeah, to yeah. yourself yeah. as well. Do you find that people are more more receptive as well like with you being in the position you're in like they've come to the church for guidance if one they're a lot more receptive than say just me having a chat to someone or when you're having a chat to someone in general um uh, both way. both people sometimes sometimes people will be more receptive yeah and some people go oh you're a pastor and don't want to talk to you yeah like, <laughs> <laughs> it, it can be a conversation starter or a conversation stopper <laughs> <It's> <laughs> And you read that one very quickly too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's good, you know. But that's okay. We all connect with different people and that's okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Over over the years as well, because you've been in the industry for 25 years, you've been helping people and amongst the community. What are some of the common things you see in men that are struggling throughout that time? And what are some of the newer more more recent problems you've seen emerge yeah oh man that's a big question pete what do i see in men over the over 25 years mm. i would see see men who are trying to make life work so yeah. they're pulling together the different things that they know or that they've seen or like in their family of origin what mm. you know what their parents did or didn't do yeah. What the guys they work with do, what they, you know, they, a lot of people are starting to read self help stuff, you know, so they'll be trying it, they'll just be drawing at stuff, trying to work out how to make life work. Mm. And I think that still goes on. I mean, we're always trying to make life work and see, yeah. what, see what works, you know. Um, but some of the more recent stuff, Pete, is really coming down to you can see the lack of meaning and identity and purpose. Yeah. You know, where that's, you know, so maybe their parents did or didn't didn't know who they were, you know, so they just sort of slogged through. Mm -hmm. So they never asked those questions. So they never saw that, that you know, my, my parents knew or my family of origin, they know who they are. 
Yeah. So, you know, they just, does that make sense? They just kind of, absolutely. they don't even think to ask the questions of who they are. That's a big thing, and, isn't yeah. it? Just yeah. that thought not to even ask or that curiosity that may come in. Yeah, yeah. And it's better off to ask yeah. than just to le- let that thought go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find that's a huge thing. Ask, yeah. even if it's saying, I have no idea about this. Yeah. Where do I start? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just right. admitting ignorance. Yeah. And people, most people are so willing to help. Yeah. And I find that's a huge thing, particularly with us men. We've a lot have been brought up to have to know, have to yeah, be yeah, right. Yeah. You can't show any sign of weakness. Yeah. And admitting ignorance, I feel, needs to be reframed where it's yeah. not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a weakness. It's actually really good. Yeah. If you can admit, hey, I don't know. So what leader or influence resonates with you? Go for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people is coming to the church. Other people is going to a coach like myself or whatever it is. Go and ask. Yeah. Go and ask. And one of the things things that I'd love to get into and expand because it made a big impact on me as well is – the author John Eldridge, because he brings together a number of those things you've just mentioned yeah. earlier on. You mentioned that not having adventure, yeah, and that's one of his principles. Yeah, yeah, and not knowing from the family of origin who you are, who they were, yeah, and coming back, finding the way. So, could you explain what those principles are? Because I'd love to unpack how we can actually interpret those and make them work in today's society as well oh yeah so there's three i think this i think mm. there's three there's the battle to fight the adventure yeah. to live and the beauty to rescue yeah and so the battle to fight is like finding finding what's worth fighting for and what yeah. what you you know what you will fight for what what's the battle you have to face and sometimes i think pete for some of us it's just going i'm just not going to settle for mediocrity anymore <laughs> you know what I mean? Like my bat, my biggest battle today is to not eat, not drink, say, not drink the tenth can of coke today. You know, yep. like sometimes that's the battle that we. But it's all for you. It's a, it's all to move you forward. It's all for you to become a better man. Yeah. To have discipline. So you know, we write these big lists and go. Oh, I want to. You know, and I was talking with someone last week. Oh, I want to do. You know, I want to do this every day of the week. And I went, well, well, slow down, Tiger. You know, like, let's just do, let's break that. Let's keep that as a goal. Yeah. What do you do now? And, oh, I do that maybe once a week. Yeah. All right, cool. What about if this week you do that twice this week? Oh, mm. but I want to do it five. Yeah, I know you want to do it five, but why not, what if you just did it two? And get that, yeah, and just do that incremental James, uh, who's the guy who wrote Atomic Habits? Oh, James Clear. James Clear, yeah. yeah. He talks a lot about that, like break it down into smaller steps that you can do mm. and then increase those steps. And then over time, you just, you, you get there. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, man, it was really helpful for this person to just be able to go, listen, like what, what are you doing now? Like where, where do you want to be? Mm. Where are you now? What's an incremental step that you can do? Yeah. Because then your confidence grows and you go, I can do this. Yeah. You know, you're not hanging out on that. Well, I did it once. This week, and I want to do it five times. You fail by the third day, and you go, oh, "I'm going to throw it away." Yeah. Or I'll leave. You know, the classic I think for men is, "I'll start next week," but, "Geez, I'm going to, I'm going to crack it next week." <laughs> do you know yes, what I mean? And you go, yeah. "Let's break it down into something really simple." Yeah. He just goes, oh, "All right, just to pick." So, what other day can you do it? Yeah. Instead of just once, so like, you just pick it. Do you think that's that's one of the drawbacks of male nature as well? We've got that. Yes warrior spirit we've got that um divide and conquer yep. create destroy yep. and sometimes we're just overly enthusiastic yes and we just go too big straight away yes yeah 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 we've got to we've, we've got to bring it back to that same thing i think where are we mm. and because we want to fix everything don't we <laughs> so we see the problem the problem is i want to do it five days but i've only done it once yeah. you know so we think we've got to jump to five because yeah. we want to fix it because it's a problem to be fixed. Whether you just go, hang on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. We will fix it one step at a time, you know? Yeah. It's like that thing, you know, that how do you eat an elephant? One <laughs> bite at a time. Do you know, it's like that. Like, just like, <laughs> just what's the next little bit you can do? Yes. Yeah. Like if you, if, say, for example, this person, you want to do something five times. 
Yeah. But you're only doing it once. Well, if, if every week or every fortnight or every month, even just go every month, yeah, you just added yeah. one more time, within six months, you're doing exactly what you wanted to do. Yes, and sustainable then too. Yeah, yeah, and it's fully sustainable. Yeah, it's you're not sabotaging yourself by going too hard yeah. and then crashing because yeah. I see that a lot, especially in You'd the see fitness industry. Indoor, yeah, yeah. Oh, in the fitness industry, it's terrible because there is a conditioning within the industry that go hard or go home, you're not getting yeah. results unless you're going hard. But elite athletes do just enough today to stimulate a response to improve because they know they've got the rest of the week yeah. that they have to train for. That's or awesome. session that day. Yeah. So it's like those incremental changes add up over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't even see yeah. until later on down the track. Yeah. Most athletes are not even improving 1% a year. Some people say just that 1% a day. What if your entire progress, if you're that highly skilled and refined at something, yeah, yeah. that you're aiming for 1% a year? Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Let's not discredit that effort because it's still effort. It yeah. takes discipline every yeah. day. And one thing that I've that I found, and have you seen this as well, where the the more you can get on top of yourself with little battles like that, the battle of your purpose in life. Yes can grow them as well and you start to naturally increase what you want to give back to the world yeah 100 percent. want to do yeah 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 i think 100 percent. percent and it's the same like we talk about the you know or you were talking about the elite athlete mm. but what about the person at the other end of the scale who's got no discipline mm. and to increase by one yeah. percent you know like your initial stage yeah. you increase by but you go there comes a point where they go i'm stretched now I, like i just need to yeah, cool slow down like again just where are you at now? Where do you want to get to? What's the next little bit you can yeah, do? Yeah, yeah. You know, because if you've got no discipline, say, say with fitness mm. or or eating or whatever, if you've got no discipline, yeah. well, a- any amount of discipline is better than what you had yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's right, that's right. And how many people do that? Like, you know, you were talking about the fitness thing. You know, mm. like, say, good examples like with food. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to go on a diet. This is going to be awesome. Yeah. Three days in, you're having cravings. You've got headaches because you're crashing. Mm-hmm. And you just want to binge. And then you go, oh, this doesn't work. Yes. Yeah. But you, you hit it too hard. Like, And they restrict. People restrict yes. way too much. Yeah, yeah. And you go, well, hold on. What's your vice? What's your go-to yes. junk food or comfort food? Why don't we just start inching back on that? Yes. Yeah. Not even cutting it out completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just looking at cutting it down. Incremental again, Pete, isn't it? That's what you're saying. Yeah, and work on that one. And then, of course, there's all your attachment to food, the yeah. the the relationship to it. But that also comes back to our relationship with ourselves. Why don't we yeah, have yeah, that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What is our battle? I find for for me, because I'm a, I'm a little more um, of an aggressive personality at times, like I've got that, that fight in me that my my battle is a part of my purpose yes it's a reason to fight it usually is when i'm down yeah, yeah so you've seen that with other people yeah as yeah, well. yeah yeah usually your yeah. your battle will line up with your adventure ah won't it like yeah because yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. your battle will usually be in your adventure yeah like if you know who you are and what you're called to yeah and what your purpose is then as you follow into that and you push into that mm-hmm. that's where you're going to find battles mm. Right, so that's Does that part of the adventure. So yeah. that's part of the journey, like a Lord of the Rings. They're going off to fight this battle, but the journey happens. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. It happens along the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they're not separate, are they? It's kind of no. like you're living the adventure, so there are battles. Yes. And then the battles are part of the adventure. Yeah, cool, you know, cool, cool. The cool. Bible's, there's a great um, verse in the Bible that says, yeah. consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. Mm. because you know the testing of your faith will develop perseverance mm. and first let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything that is an awesome life lesson yeah. and then so if you, we, we want the joy consider it for you a joy and we want the mature and complete <laughs> without the trials yeah, in the we middle. don't want the trials or the persevering. <laughs> you know, we yes. just want it, isn't it? Like we just want to do this big jump. And you know, that's true. Yeah. It, who I don't know anyone whose life works that way. No, and I think this is a huge thing because men have a history of not speaking up. Yeah. 
there can be this element of feeling of, oh, I'm defective. I can't make my life work because mm. there's always a challenge. There's always yes. something thrown yeah. at me. And I know when I started hearing other people's stories, yeah. and I know you've had yours. We've spoken personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but your purpose keeps you going yeah. through the hardest of times. There are times where you've wanted to stop. You've, you've questioned, yeah. what are you doing? Where are you going? Yeah, and yeah. boom, no. This yeah. is my purpose. This is what I'm called yeah. to. This is my battle. Yeah. And you've overcome that and kept going. And you, you just keep you just keep pressing through. Like I went through yeah. burnout, but we've talked about that, you know. Yeah. I went through burnout, man. I just not want to get up, not want to do anything, mm. you know, just questioning everything. Yeah. But your identity and your call will redirect you. Yes. You know, and you, you come back to that and you go, okay. This is where I've got to go. This is this is who I am. Yeah. How do I move forward? And that's your prayer then. How do I move forward in this, God? Mm. What are you teaching me in this place, God? Like, yes. You know, rather than saying, I've messed up or, it, you know, it's my fault, I've got to fix it. It's like, this is where I am. That same thing. This is where I am. Yeah. How do I move forward, God? Would you give me the strength to move forward? Will you show me the way forward? What's the next thing? Yeah. Even the Buddhists have a saying, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Oh, I've so heard that. Have that's that curiosity. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. It's yeah. It's the same thing as what you just said. Where once once you ask a question, you start being open and curious and going, yeah. How can I do this? What do I need? Who do I need to help me? Yeah. I need help. You you yeah. like open yourself up to saying, hey, I can't do this by myself. I need help in learning the next step. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so it, it's a bit like. It, Probably a bad example, mate, but it's a bit like that thing when you buy a car, all of a sudden you see thousands of them. Yeah, that's you right. Know, right? It's that kind of thing. <laughs> when, you, when you're looking, when your eyes are open. Yes. You know, yeah. that's when you see. Yeah. And you can go, that person's been here all the time. Why have they never mentioned that before? Well, they probably mm. have a thousand times. You've just never been open and ready to listen to what they have to say. Yeah, that's, that's a great yeah. point. I found that myself. Over time, there are pennies that drop years later. Yes. And I started... <laughs> sending a message to these people the ones that i still had contacts for i would send them a message saying hey years ago you said this to me i wasn't ready to hear it i resisted it but it just made sense thank you so much yeah. <laughs> just to know that the seed was planted i yeah. want them to know yeah that that that's so good it. yeah it took me a while yeah. sometimes i'm a little slow yeah, <laughs> yeah. we all are mate, yeah. <laughs> and I bet some of them i wonder where they're going did i even say that you yeah. don't remember saying that. I've had that. Yeah. I've no recollection. You said that yeah, to yeah. me. Where, yeah. <laughs> That's right. When I've something you had said to me, I forget what it was now. Um, and you said I have no recollection. Yeah, so I don't remember. Right. It was the absolutes. Oh yes. Not speaking in absolutes. That yeah. this is or it it's it's always it's never. Yeah. <laughs> and you had no recollection yeah. of ever saying that to me, and it was just a general conversation. Yeah. But it was a pivotal point for me to yeah. to then go well. Maybe that's a good lesson to constantly keep your perspective open. Yes. Yeah. Have yeah. your belief on what works for you now. Yeah. But then be open to other information coming in from yeah. a different perspective. Be open to change as you mature. Yeah. Don't don't lock yourself in and put the blinkers on to only this. Yeah. Only yeah that's that. good. That's awesome. And 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 that made a huge difference to me. And oh, keeps that awesome. curiosity and open-mindedness as well. Because that comes to mindful. Yeah. I think when you've got the blinkers on, you're not seeing. Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't hear because you're just full of 100% black or white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no shades right. of grey, so nothing yeah. computes. Yeah. And then you wonder why your life's not working. Yeah. That's a huge thing. Or pride too, Pete. Yeah. Like if you're so full of yourself, mm. there's no room for anyone else to have any input into you. Yeah. Is it because you're so full of yourself? Actually, that's one thing that would that that fascinates me. It just pop, popped into my head now. Have you seen that a lot in your congregations over the years where you see people, different places you've worked, you see people come in and, they're, and they've got that cockiness, the arrogance, but over time you start to see them change yep. and soften up a bit? Or? Yep. Usually you, from battles again, but usually from yeah. things that are difficult. Or trials, you know, could you, could you all me to face trials? Yeah. The same thing, you know, like it's in their, 
it's when you face a difficulty. Mm. I heard one guy, I think it was Henry Blackaby, called it a crisis of belief. When you go through a, okay. some, a crisis or the way you think about something is not working and you start to, then you go, mm. oh, you know? Yeah. And they, you, or they solidify their position. Some people, unfortunately, will just solidify and go, no, I am right. I am, I, it's all about me again. It's all about I, I, I. It's yeah. not about people. It's not about other people. Yeah. Yeah, that's a. Mm. So the kind of rather solidifies their own self importance. Yep. Or they go, there's a lesson here, man. Like, what have I got to do? What's happening? Mm. You mm. know? And you can help them and speak into that. Yeah. But if someone's cool. full of themselves, heck, there's no room for anyone to speak, speak into them in a way yes. that they can hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah. great thing. Now, just just on that, before we move on, just the third part, the beauty to say. Oh, yeah. 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 That's, yeah, that's... In different ways this can be interpreted. Yes. Yeah, that's right. You know, how do you see it? I see it... If you, if you take it at face value of beauty to rescue, then I, I would say, like, say in your partner, then that, that you help, as a man, you help them to show their beauty and bring their beauty to the world. Mm. So it's not saving, saving the damsel in distress. No, it's like a saving their heart. Yes, so they can still express their full beauty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, yeah. Uh, so particularly like Pete, like, like again, how many? If if you ask most women, what do you think of yourself, or mm. you know, do you think you're beautiful or attractive? Most would say no. Yeah. yeah. Do you know, and so there's how do you help? How do you help your wife? How do you help her to bring her beauty to the world? Because she's got a beauty to unveil to the world. How do you help her to do that and not just hide it away? Mm. Now, you've been married a very long time, (laughs) right? And this is one thing that I'm really interested to hear from you because you hear so many different stories of marriages that get boring or they separate or it's just... You know, it goes downhill yeah. over time because you do get used to people. Yeah. It, you know, life it can't always be exciting. How have you found that process, whether it's some of the struggles or the key points that you've been able to, to um, bring that to your wife oh, and wow. help her keep... Her you probably should ask her, going. mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh That's a good question. I mean, so I've been married over 30 years. Yeah. So my eldest daughter is almost 30. Yeah. You know, um, we were married a couple of years and then had, had her. Um, I think one of the things that happens, Pete, is, again, coming back to that identity, it's, it's so mm. much of it's related. If, again, if you don't know who you are and your purpose, you know, you, you get married, you have, a, you have a partner, you have a wife, you know, like mm. you say, Things start to get a bit boring or whatever. You look for adventure, don't you? So you look mm. for it in pornography, perhaps, or you, you go and have an affair. And yeah. it's interesting. They, I've heard it said that most affairs don't happen for good sex. No, it's actually for the adventure of yeah. having the affair and not getting caught. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I just at first I went, oh, that's ridiculous. But you, what you speak to people who have had affairs or their marriages split up and that, and mm. you start, you know, they wouldn't use those words, but you kind of go, yeah. Everything yeah. got a bit boring, a bit stale, wanted something fresh, you know, whatever other words they put around it. Yeah. You know, and they went looking elsewhere. Mm. You know, so how do you not do that? Man, I mean, you, you'll go through seasons where it is, you know, like you're just, you're just running hard, you know, and because you're doing a lot of other stuff and there's a heap of things going on, you don't necessarily invest so much in your own relationship. Mm. But you've got to come back to... Well, for me, I come back to, no, this is who I am. And I made this commitment. 1992, January 11, 1992, I made the commitment. That's beautiful. So I'll be a man of my word. Yeah. Or I won't. Yeah. You know, yeah. so that's a primary thing. Mm. And then, so once you, I've done that, you go, okay, if that's who I am and that's my commitment, mm. how do I make this work? Same thing again. What's the next increment? What's the next little thing I need to yeah. do? We're not going to go from, you know, just busy, 
not not in love, not not committed to one another, but here yeah. you just go from you know living life and just making things making things work, you know, doing stuff. Yeah. How do you go to investing? What's the next little thing? Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. And it, it, it's increments again, man. It's not you know people want that big. Oh, we're going to go on a cruise. We're going to do all this awesome stuff. We you know we're going to move and sell a house and we're going to just yeah. what's the next little thing? Maybe it's just having one night. Yes. One yeah. night at home. Like maybe it's just I'm just going to start having one night at home and we're not going to watch TV. We're just going to talk. Oh yeah. You know, and we'll just we'll be really tired because we stopped. Yeah. And we'll go to bed early. That's okay. But we're connecting. You know, like it's. Mm. Again, we're looking for the big things, that look, you know, <laughs> yeah. the sparklers. And you go, sometimes it's just stopping and just being, yes. being together. That brings me to another concept that you introduced me to, the significance of ordinary. Because oh, yeah. yeah. I feel like that is a perfect example. Could you, could you explain that further? Like, what's the significance of ordinary? Yeah. Um, the significance of ordinary... Nowadays, especially with social media, mm. I think there's this drive that you have to be significant, you know, and you'll be significant like when you've got 100,000 followers, you'll be significant yeah. when you're posting on social media all the time and you're portraying mm. this lifestyle that makes you look like you are significant. Yes. Do you okay. know what I mean? But then if you, I think there's significance in the ordinary. Like, what about the mum and dad who raise their kids and the dad who works 60 hours a week to put food on the table Yeah. and to educate his kids and now his kids are doing a bit better than he did as a kid, you know? Like, mm. that's significant, mate. Yes. You know, I don't care about 100,000 followers. Show me the guy who's doing that. Show me the mum who just works for her kids and they raise good kids. Yeah, there's a lot of that yeah. out there. The yeah. Unsung hero. Yeah, yeah, you know that kind of thing. And what about the what about the man or the woman who invests in people in their community and they don't even mm. know, like you were saying before, you know, don't even know the impact they've had. Yes, yeah. There's just significance in the ordinary moments of life. Yes, just those conversations yeah. and connections. Do you feel like that's that's a big part of fostering long term healthy relationships as well? Like you said, even if yeah. it's just that night in, yeah, with your partner. That you have with your wife, where you just don't watch TV. It's just you and her. Yeah, yeah. Eyes talking, really connecting. Just those little things that help help yeah. revitalize that that aspect of the relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it, it flows from like the macro level right up. Mm-hmm. The same thing. Like again, don't look for the massive big shifts. Mm. Just look for the ordinary little things. Yeah, the significance in the ordinary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And pursue the significance in the ordinary. Yeah. Because the social media will kind of give you the idea, probably being a bit a bit harsh, but you know, they'll kind of give you the idea that anyone can be like that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Now, everyone yeah. can do that, you know? Yeah. But you don't know what their world's like behind, you know, you see that 60 minute, 60 second video or, you know, the photos or whatever. Yeah. And you go, but you don't know what they're like. How many of them don't have good relationships? What if you mm. haven't got relationships, mate? Like you can have a hundred thousand followers. Yeah. But man, if you if you haven't got someone who you have conversation with and will keep you honest, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like yeah. your head's getting beat because you got all these followers. <laughs> you need the person who goes, yeah, but you know, let me tell you how ordinary you are as well. Like, <laughs> But it, do you know what I mean? Because they've got to bring you back to just yeah. normal, like to ordinary. Which your partner will, because they know all yeah, of your yeah. flaws. Yes. All of your flaws. All mate. the great stuff and all of the crappy stuff yeah. too that you probably yeah. don't even know you know. Yeah, all that's right. You don't even know that you do. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing, mate. So I do. The significance in the ordinary. Yeah. And we shouldn't, we shouldn't, oh, well, not shouldn't, we don't have to pursue significance yeah. in greatness we can be great in the ordinary we can be significant in the ordinary yeah those yeah. ordinary moments that we spend with someone mm. and, well it comes back to that saying no act of kindness is wasted mm, that's right. it? it's those little things that just make a difference to someone who is struggling yeah that smile your yeah. locked eyes your smile and that you, that can just break their state yeah 
and open them up to oh oh yeah that was lovely yeah yeah a, i tell people as well when it comes to giving because it's so important to give back yeah again not massive just yeah. the ordinary things well what's in your budget all right can you give your time yeah if it's financial what's in your budget yeah is it a paid forward coffee yeah something like that I know there are a couple of cafes that I go to frequently where I, I um, trust the staff yeah. and I'll do a paid forward. Yeah, that's awesome. Mate. And the rules are, don't do it when I'm here. Don't tell them who it came from. Yes. And be discerning on who you give it to. Yeah. If you, if, if you know someone's struggling, if you see, hey, they look a bit down, don't just give it to someone who's having yeah, an yeah. amazing time. Not the or next dude in line. Or your friend. Yeah. Be discerning. Yeah. Make a decision for yourself. Awesome. And don't tell me about it or tell them it was me because that's just yeah. fuel for the ego <laughs> yeah, that's to right. go, well, yes, I yeah. did something important. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. No, it's just about the, the anonymity, mate, isn't it? Yes. The yeah. anonymity in it and all. Them receiving yeah. an act of kindness, them receiving a little bit of sunshine yeah. in their day. Yeah. Those little ordinary things. Yeah. So how did you come oh. to that then, Pete? How did you come to a place where you... You went, that's important. I want to do that. I was reading, oh, I forget his name. The book, How to How to Get What You Want and Want What You Have. I think that was it. Oh, what a great title. Yeah. This guy's written other books as well. I can see his face. Yeah, I just can't think of his name. Uh, <laughs> kind of like James Clear writing Atomic Habits. <laughs> yeah. I've got an awesome book. One of the best yes. I've read for years. Yeah. Can't remember the guy's name. Yeah. <laughs> and this author goes through, I think it's one of the Johns. There are a few oh, Johns yeah. that are yeah. authors. <laughs> it could be one of the Johns. And um, anyway, yeah, it goes awesome. through the 10 love tanks. Oh. The 10 love tanks that come about at different stages of our lives that need to be filled. Yeah. And that we need to work on at certain times of our life. And one of them is the the um, giving back, giving back yep. to society. And there was that and learning the the concept of the 10%. Yep. Um, the richest man in Babylon. Yep. That 10% that you put away, you don't touch, but there's also a certain amount that you um, give. Yes. Right? But do it within your means. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't go putting yourself out yeah. and don't go putting yourself on the street for it yeah but what can you do that's in your means yeah, yeah. and i just thought oh that's great because i am the kind of person that naturally goes big yeah, yeah. this has to be yeah. massive yeah. no it doesn't yeah. it doesn't have to be massive yeah it just has to be genuine yeah and it can be massive to someone else though pete exactly isn't it like what you you like you pay it for with a coffee to that yes. person who's struggling that day Yes. That someone thought to pay a coffee that doesn't even know them. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. Do you do you also see see the accumulation of that even with your own kids, like the way you've wanted to parent your own kids, just those little ordinary things you do for them day to day or over the years? Have you seen that accumulation that they may not recognise, but you've seen the results of? Um or even vice versa? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of an example of one, but yeah, you do like you, the time you invest in your kids is so significant. Yeah. Even, and it's in, like you say, it's in those little, that you, you don't always, you don't always recognize, like, you know, the kids will say, oh, I remember when we did this dad. I go, no, don't remember. Yeah, but it's like, significant. But to them, them, they remember this stuff. Yeah. You know, and, and it can be funny things like, oh, like, Things we did when we were on holidays, you know, like a walk, we went on a walk. Or, you know, just, again, it's not something like, oh, remember that time we jumped out of an aeroplane, Dad? You know, no. <laughs> you know, it can just be normal things. Well, yes. I haven't done that with one of my sons. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, it can be, yeah. it's the little things. Yeah. I used to take them, um, one of the things we used to do is go um, motorbike riding and dirt bike riding on oh, Saturdays. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And it's one of the things, like, you did it all the time, but now two of my, two of my kids, are still passionate about motorbikes. Yes. And they want to do it. They talk about doing it with their kids mm. because of the significance of that bonding and doing stuff. 
Yeah. Doing it together. That also comes brings in one of the other concepts of male nature, isn't it? That coming in with the adventure in a different way. Yep. It's not career adventure, but that's an adventure and a yep. danger. Oh, the yeah, yeah. The need for men to have a sense of risk. Yes. And an element of danger in yep. order to stay sharp and progress yep. at life and still stay dangerous. Yes, yeah, and yeah. not get too much in the comfort zone. Yep. Isn't it? Yeah. It's a huge thing. And it's the risk, isn't it? It's the risk and the danger without being dumb. Like don't yes. do dumb danger. <laughs> but you gotta you gotta step outside your comfort zone. Calculated risk. Yeah, calculated. That that's a yeah. better way of saying it. Yeah. Dumb danger is not the best. <laughs> calculated risk is very cool. Yeah, yeah. No, well, some things are dumb. I'm sure yeah. we all look back and go yeah. you have a memory pop up from years ago and you just yeah. think that was really dumb of me. Yeah, I can yeah, see yeah. why. I do this with conversations. And yeah. I, think, I can see why I didn't get the result I wanted yeah, yeah. back then. That was concept yeah. was good, delivery was yeah. horrific. That was a dumb decision. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, you know, people say, "What were you thinking?" I go, "Nothing." <laughs> there, no, it was, there was clearly no thinking yeah. going on. <laughs> it was just dumb. And that's okay to admit too. Yeah, I yeah, think it's right. important. Yeah, yeah. To be able to laugh at ourselves, yeah. but that element of danger. And this is something that I know. You've done with your with your congregation as well with mentoring youth. You take them out, yeah. Teach them life skills, survival skills, and get out into nature. Yeah. What kind of changes have you seen or influences you've seen in the kids when you've done this? And could you explain how you go about it? Because you do it so beautifully. Oh, thanks, Pete, for the encouragement. You're welcome. (laughs) Something (laughs) excites me, man. I just think it's great because we do live in a very suburban era yeah so yeah please continue yeah so what um not necessarily an outdoor thing but let me tell you about one of the young women that we've invested in at our church yeah what this young woman was um shy even even to the point of being reasonably broken yeah you yeah. know like really had, had had a tough a tough lot up mm. to this point and she uh, she was at a place where, you know, it's to shrink away like that, you know, that beauty to rescue, that kind of like, mm. I don't want anyone to see me. I don't want anyone to hear me. You know, yeah, I'll just kind of exist, you know, and I'm happy existing. I just don't want any attention on me. You know, yeah. we've been investing in, in her for a, a few years. And after a few years, She'll she'll public speak. Oh wow! She'll, you know, when I see the roles she does now. Yes. The times I see her, I'll go. Do you remember? You know, X number of years ago, and she goes, "I know, I know." But it's all those things where you just keep stretching them outside. They're just outside. They're incremental. Yeah, incremental. yeah, incremental. Yeah, yeah. But then the confidence grows, and so the next step. Is a bigger increment, still incremental, mm. but it's a bit bigger. And then it's a, and it's just awesome, man. Like so, you just see now she's running departments. Oh wow! Of stuff, really? you know, and you just go, it's so cool. Man. Yeah. There's the adventure, you know. You talk yes. about adventure, adventure for her, but adventure for us because you go, we don't know where this will end up. Yeah. But we're so committed to growing people and helping people, mm. and that translates out into life. As well, yeah. this is what I love because I remember last year um, when I did some speaking as part of your leadership program, yeah. going through what you do throughout the year, it's like, wow, this is just real life stuff. It's not just what what some people would expect of just a church group thing. Yeah, yeah. It is, this is developing you for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah. You can take those skills into the workplace. You yeah. can take that into any industry. Yeah, and have you found as well? Just, just going back to um, encouraging and supporting that that um, beauty shining through. Have you seen that in that young woman where her own personality's been able to come out? Oh and yeah, see the beauty that was in there. Yeah, hundred percent. Like her eyes will light up now. Mm. You know, and she'll crack jokes and she'll be funny now. Nice. You know all that yeah. stuff, and it's again, it's that in the, the, her inward life. She's letting it come out now. Like she's yeah. not a, she's not hiding. She's she's letting herself be herself, mm. and she's mm. going, well, this is who I am. Yeah, and it's so good. Yeah, 
same with some of the young guys too you know the young guys we work with same thing you know yeah what have you seen with them with the youth what are some of the common things you see because young men they do lack a lot of guidance yeah um they do lack a lot of things and then like we spoke about look for it in the wrong ways yeah what kind what's the common kind of kid that you see or types of kids that you see coming in the young boys and how do you then help steer them to a better path uh so some of the common things is they're uncertain Mm. like not sure what to do not sure which way to go yeah certainly a a lot of it too has to do with again in that wild at heart book you know you've got what it takes like they just go i don't know i forgot what it takes Mm. to do too much at all yeah so instead of challenging yourself and rising you just keep lowering the bar to where you are does that make sense yes yeah where you see them now they just they'll just keep you you help them to you give them a challenge that's achievable, mm-hmm. but still a stretch, a challenge. Yeah. And they grow. And then they go, oh, I can do that. Go, well, if you can do that, you can do this. Really? No way. And he goes, just try it. What's the worst that happens? Yeah. And you just walk with them and they just, but, but you know, they start at a place where they're uncertain. Yes. Not everyone, but some of, some of the guys we work with. Mm. And have you found as well that that's affected their, their decision-making skills? Yep out in the street or when they've fallen into the wrong groups of friends like being able to make their own decisions on who they want to be and where yeah 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 because we help them we we try and help people to find who they are like how are you made like who are you what's your personality what do you what do you like doing what do you dislike doing yeah what's your family of origin where's all that you know you, you kind of help them to find who they are yes yeah and then again as they find well this is the kind of person i what i like to do well let's help how does that impact your work and let's yes. let's help you in that yeah right right so you're not it's not that well in this church this is our template no that's how right. a person should be or how a man should be you just go well let's unpack who you are and what yeah. you bring to the table what you've been given yes yeah, yeah. your gifts to bring to the world and yeah, exactly. to your own life yeah that's a huge we love thing. people We're not meant to be ordinary, are we? no we love people Pete. So we love we want to we want to help people grow. Mm. We don't want to slot them into a role. Yep. So whatever, as we help that person grow, that's awesome, yeah. man. Like, let that translates into their relationships, into their vocation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like into everything. And you go, that's what you want. You want to help people grow. Yes. Yeah. You know? And that's the feed-on effect, isn't it? Like that just yeah. bleeds out into everything they do in everyone's lives that they touch. Yeah. So even though you're you're here on the Sunshine Coast, and it's it's not a highly advertised church, but still you're developing these people over the years, and then every life that they touch, yeah, boom, just yeah, feeds yeah, out, feeds well, out. That's like that that significance of ordinary. Not the yeah, what you're yeah. doing is ordinary. I don't mean to say that. Yeah. Oh, it, in some ways it is though. Awesome. Those little things that yeah. you help them with over yeah, time. Yeah. And just impacts so many more people. Yeah. And I feel like that's a huge thing that I want men to understand is it's the little things. Yeah. Like you said, you don't have to be that person on social media with um, mm. all the followers. That's right. What are you doing in your own community? What are you yeah. doing for the little things? Yeah. What are you doing for people day to day? Yeah. And strip the ego out of it. Yeah. And be a vessel of sunshine. Yeah, I was going to say, Pete, it's like what you were saying, hey, like that pay it forward with a coffee. Mm. Like what's the little anonymous things that you can do for people Yeah, that you you won't be recognised for? Yeah. Do you know, like mow the lady's lawn three doors down, you know? Mm-hmm. Like if her lawn's a bit long, mm. just go and mow it for her. Like go and do, just do something ordinary. Like just go and, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, so look at our aging population. How much stuff could we, can we do for our aging population? Yeah, picking but things up, just little things. If they like, drop it, yeah, yeah. The amount of times people are grateful yeah. that you just stop, boom, yeah, pick something up, hand it to. Them. Oh, would you like a hand with that? Yeah, you yeah. See someone struggling, yeah, with bags or whatever. Yeah, because I don't. F- yeah, there is support for um, people with 
with um, whether it's the aging or the special needs populations, yeah. there is support. But what are the other little things yeah. when no one's watching? But that's not connection though, Pete. No. Do you know no, what I mean? Like there's not. support to get a task done. It's a done. service. Yeah. yeah. But what we hunger for, what our hearts are hungering for is actually a connection. Mm. Isn't mm. It? So like you say, that just look, look them in the eye and smile and say, hey man, how are you doing today? Yeah. Can I help you with that? What a good day. You know, just find yeah. something. The connection between two people on for yeah. 10 seconds, 30 seconds. Yeah, to be acknowledged, to yeah. feel important yeah. to someone. Yeah, yeah. Someone You're doing a great job, man. It. You know, that, like, just, yeah. gee, you did that well. That's awesome. Yes. That point and wave, if you're in yeah, the yeah. business. Yeah. That's what I like about, I don't, I don't know if you're like this, when you're in an area for a while, you've been working in a community for a while, and you just get to know people on various levels. Yeah. Whether it's the cafe where the people know your name and you get a bit of a talk and a chat with them, a bit of history. Yeah. So you can see them, call out, give them a compliment. I love that about the community vibe, which I feel lacks a lot as well because there have been so, much, so many types of division, whether it's your... Um, whether it's the type of diet that you follow, people yep. will not talk to you <laughs> because because of your eating preferences, yep. your workout preferences, your faith preferences, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. There's so many types of divide yep. that people will or won't talk to you on. It's like, yep. well, that's just making it worse. Yeah, yeah. Let's just bring down some of these barriers. Yeah. And like you said, see who this person yeah. is. Like you want to see someone comes into your church. You want to see who they are. Yeah. You want to see what's on the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does that express? Yeah. How can you develop that? Well, how can we develop with other people? Yeah. How can we develop our kids and mentor the youth yeah. to be themselves? Yeah. Because this is something that I've seen a lot in the barbershop as well. Over time, parents taking ownership of their kids and their kids' opinions. Yeah. And it's like, it's a haircut. <laughs> if they want a haircut that looks a bit stupid... That's okay. Yeah, it'll grow. Yeah, like, yeah. It's their sense of identity that yeah. they are trying to express. Yes, and it's one decision that they get when parents make so many because they have to anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, like, so why not? I don't think any of us have chosen haircuts or fashion that our parents like. <laughs> Genuinely, <laughs> went. My mum's going to love this shirt I'm yeah. wearing. It. I'm buying <laughs> yeah. this one. Hey, Dad, I want the pants like <laughs> yeah. yours. Who does that? Yeah, We've yeah. all been that kid. Yeah, and 100%. <laughs> I feel it's so important to try and encourage those personalities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And acknowledge the stages of development. Because you would have seen this. You've got kids. Yeah. Just the common stages of development. Yeah. That don't ask more than that. Yeah, yeah. Them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And again, it's helping people to make decisions in that stage or wherever they are, isn't it? It's yeah. like your kids. Just help them make it look... Just don't do something dumb like a haircut will grow back. You know, <laughs> you will laugh at yourself at one point when you see how dumb that haircut was. Yeah. But it's like, like it's just a haircut. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great example. It's a stage of a surgery. But you don't want them to do something dumb. No. You know, that's your thing. Like, just how do you help them to make decisions? Yeah. I heard a great thing years ago, Pete, where they were talking about two-year-olds. You know, you know, it was a big thing about kids can choose everything around it. You know, oh, yeah, thing. Yeah. you know, but it was like, yeah, let them choose. Like, give them two outfits to choose from to wear. Like, okay, today, yeah. you, you know, which do you, do you want to wear that one or this one? Yes, yeah. Give them choice, but don't go, oh, just wear anything. Yes, yeah, yeah. You know, like, help them to, we're going to a wedding. Um, you you know, do you want to wear this one or do you want to wear this one? What, what would you like to wear? Yeah. For me, it was which colour tie? Oh, yes. <laughs> which tie do you like? Yeah. None. I don't want to wear a tie. I hated ties growing up. I still do. Oh. But for certain occasions, you needed a tie. You need, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so it was which tie do you want? Do you want the bluish one? Do you want this yeah. other color one? Yeah. I'll take the blue one. Yeah, yeah. With the paisley pattern. Yeah. Well, in your mind, you're going, I don't want a tie. I don't want <laughs> any tie. <laughs> but I liked blue. Yes. So I'm like, all right, that's not a bad compromise. I got to choose. Yeah, that's it. That was it. Yeah. You got to choose, though, isn't it? Like, that's the important yeah. thing. It wasn't, yeah. you will do this. It's like, and that's a you huge, help them to make choices. It's a huge thing as an adult as well. Yeah. I find a lot of men 
abdicate responsibility for their own decisions. Yeah. With ambiguity. Yeah. So, so what do you want to do here? Oh, I don't mind. Whatever. Yeah. No, it's up to you. Oh, whatever the kids want. Whatever. And it's harming it off. Yeah. And then later, perhaps in hindsight, come in and go, oh, yeah, I knew that wasn't going to work. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I asked you. Yeah, if you knew it wasn't going to work, that's your time to say. Yeah, and it's okay to be wrong. Yeah. This was a huge thing, um, I know, for my own learning and for a lot of men, learning that it's okay because that's where you progress. Yeah. It's okay, but you have to own your decision. Yeah, 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 that's right. Even if you see it was wrong, well, at the time I made the decision yeah. with this in mind to the best of my ability, and now I can see otherwise, cool, let's adjust. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And that starts from a kid. If you keep getting told, 100%, yep. hey, you're wrong, kid. You don't want that haircut. Yep. That that looks stupid. What did you do yep. that for? You just get criticized you, You'd be upset. Right? That's why I did it. Yeah, and it's like, well, if we keep doing that, yep. they're never going to make their own decisions. Yep. That's right. They're never going to be the strong, powerful, dangerous men. And I don't mean dangerous in a bad no, way. No, in a good way. I mean, yeah, a very positive way that can make decisions, that can create, yeah. that can further, that can lead. Yeah. That's never going to happen if we squash them. That will want. take the risk, hey, like we were saying before, that, that will step into a calculated risk. Yes. And go, it is risky and it can go either way, but this is yeah. my decision. And own that, mm. you know. Or, or, or the other side too, Pete, you know, where kids aren't allowed to make decisions or aren't taught to make decisions yes. or aren't allowed to have a choice. Yeah. And then they hit 18 and mum and dad essentially go, well, you're 18 now, you're an adult, you choose everything. And they go, yeah. but I've never made any choices. So now how do I know how to choose anything? Yeah. And mum's still making the bed and doing the laundry. <laughs> they yeah. can't even wash their own undies. How yeah, do they yeah, need yeah. to be an adult? Yeah, yeah. They've, got to go, yeah. On. they've got to go to work and make decisions, but yeah. they, can't, they don't know how to work the washing machine. Yeah, yeah. It's those little things. It's those ordinary things, isn't yeah. it? The significance of the ordinary. Yeah. I know my mum was big on that. She made me learn to vacuum. She made me learn to do housework. Yeah. And she would stand there. I would do a bad job just because I didn't want to do it. Yeah. She would stand there and go, no, do it properly. I can see, blah, 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 blah. This is how you do it. She would do a little bit and stand there and watch me until I did it properly. Oh, which is awesome, right. though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because but there's a whole lot of lessons in that, isn't it? And your own integrity and your own character then. Yes. I will do a proper job. Yes. She's teaching you to do a, a proper job. Yeah, exactly. You know, that came through. Yeah. Do it properly the first time. Yeah. Don't don't half ass it and don't live to just get through. Just yeah, be yeah. quite near enough is good enough. Yeah. No, Take no, no. Do the best you, you can. Yeah. That's your integrity. That's what people will trust you on as yeah. well that I've come to learn. Yeah. People trust you by your consistency of integrity. Yeah. So yeah. if we're constantly going back on our word, we're not making decisions, we're not taking leadership ourselves yeah yep. how how is a partner going to be happy with us yeah if they can't trust us to make a decision yeah yeah they can't trust us to stand up for ourselves let That's alone good, Pete. your kids let alone them or because i'm sure you would have seen this um about how vulnerable a a woman can be and feel when they're pregnant yeah they're heavily pregnant yeah yeah there's not far they can go there's not much they can do no without some assistance so they can't trust you what's what are the stress chemicals like in the baby yeah because it's coursing through the mum. yeah it's yeah. coursing through the baby as well can they trust you yeah. is that going to lead to a long-term happy family yeah at least if you can make a decision and say well i messed that up i was wrong but i'm going to correct it yeah and look for a way ask like you said before yeah, yeah. what do i need to do for this next step yeah, yeah, that's right. But all these little things come together, I feel, that we're discussed. Like there are those little points in there. So if you're watching or listening at home, run back through this. Have a think about what we've discussed and those little key points that have come up throughout the episode of what you can do mm -hmm. little steps day to day. Yeah. Who can you ask? Yeah. What kind of background do you come from? Who Who resonates with you because of that? Yeah. What kind of voice do you want to hear yeah. on the other side? You know, and there are different people for different things yeah. in life, different lessons. There are times when I personally wanted your opinion yeah. on things and I've asked you because I value that and I know I'm going to get yeah. 
an honest opinion. You're going to make me think. You're going to give me a perspective and yeah. a frame that's going to help me make my own decisions. Yeah. And it, it's funny how that works out too, Pete, because I've come mm. to you for advice on things and, and yeah. say, hey, Pete, what do I do with this? Because I know that that's your area. Yeah. And yeah. I know you won't lie to me and you won't sugarcoat it. You'll just go, Bill, yeah. this like this. This is what it is. Yeah. Cool. Okay, I can do something with that. It builds that trust and connection. Yeah. So what men do you have around you in your life that you can trust and connect with? Yeah. Who do you want to be more like? Yeah. Can you take influence and go, I really like how yeah. how um this person speaks. Yeah. I really like how that person takes charge of their environment. Yeah. Aspects of a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just take those aspects in. And then even ask them, Pete. Yes. Like, you know, like... That's, a, the, that's the most valuable way to Yeah, do. yeah. The, you know, just being bold enough to go up and say, hey, Pete, I really like the way you can do this. Mm. How do you do that? Yeah. Or can you teach me? Or how did you get to that? You know, just think of some questions before you bundle up to them. But yes. ask them some questions. Yeah. And find out. Because I've never met a man who wasn't happy to share the lessons he's learned and give you tips to get better at something. Yeah. Never been anyone who doesn't want to do that. Yeah. Come in genuine without ego. Yeah, yeah. And willingness to learn. Yeah. It's the same as athletes. Be inquisitive and coachable. Yeah. Ask questions, show initiative, be coachable. Yeah. But that's life then, Pete, though, isn't it? Yeah. You say that to you again, Absolutely. that's life. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So I hope you got something from this. There are some real nuggets of gold in there. Yeah. Like I said, go back, listen to it again over time. And thank you, Phil, so much for um, coming on oh, the show. Thank absolute you pleasure, mate. For um, being the first guest as yeah. well. As well, that really means a oh. lot to me. And I really appreciate everything that you do for the community. I love what you do. I love what you do in my life as my friend. And it just means a lot. This is what we're looking for, guys, to find our community, find these yeah. people that we can connect with that can help each other move forward yeah. in life. Yep. So thank you, Phil. Pleasure, Pete. And Phil, yeah, yeah. If, if anyone wants to get in touch with you or follow what you were doing with the church, how can they follow or get in touch? Yep, uh, I'm on Facebook. Not very often, though. <laughs> I've got too much real life stuff to do to be on social media. <laughs> um, but you can come, you know, we're, we've got a great church in Nambour, Hope Community Church. You, or everyone's welcome to come to Hope Community Church, plug in and see, meet some good people, live a genuine and authentic life. That's what it is. You know? Awesome. Thank you so much, Phil. Pleasure, Pete. And we'll Thank see you, you again next episode. Awesome. Thanks, man. Stay tuned in. Just a friendly reminder that what we discussed today does not constitute personalized advice. If you're planning on making significant changes to your life, creating a pathway suited to your specific needs and goals is recommended. Also, if you have any questions or topics you would like me to cover on future episodes, please get in touch via social media or through the website. And thank you again, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.